Welcome to rotational kinematics and energy. I'd like you to consider something spinning on an axis. Look at this nice new pen. All right. So here's an arrow that's about to rotate around a fixed point right here. I'll give it a little push that way and it'll spin around and around and it'll trace out a circle for us. Let's see, its path will be roughly like that. That's kind of a nasty circle. But I'd like to define the angle theta as the angle by which, the angle by which my rotating arrow has displaced. So we can define theta to be, well, theta is uh, the angular position. So theta is going to be kind of like x for us on things that are spinning around. And the idea is that we're gonna use radians to measure theta, and I'll tell you why. First of all, let me say that theta is positive this direction. This would be theta greater than zero. But if, um, if theta is this direction, then this would be theta less than zero. So by convention, things going counterclockwise are getting positive theta and things going clockwise are getting negative theta. Please don't let that happen again. So a revolution is 360 degrees, you know that. One revolution is 360 degrees. And you know the idea of a radian, but you may not perhaps be comfortable with the idea of a radian. Radians are connected with arc length. I love radians. Here's what a radian means. When the arc length of the tip of the arrow, that is a letter that we're gonna represent by S, when the arc length is equal to the radius of the circle, then the angle that we've gone is equal to one radian. So let's see, the radian is the angle, angle at which S equals R. When the arc length traveled by the tip of the arrow is equal to the radius, that's a radian. And the really cool thing about this is we can make ourselves some equations. Let's first make the equation that S equals theta times R. Because r is a constant, s is gonna get bigger as theta gets bigger. And we know that when s is equal to r, theta is one radian. So if we, ooh, let me say that one more time. This is super important. When s, the arc length, is equal to the radius, we have one radian. So that's when s equals r, theta is equal to one, a single radian. But if theta is two radians, then s would be two times r. Here's a question for you. What is, we'll put this in purple, this tricky question. What is theta when s equals two pi r? Do you guys know what two pi r is? Two pi r, two pi r. Anybody in the back of the room, two pi r? What's two pi r? Circumference. The circumference, that's all the way around the circle. So when s has gone like this, how many radians have we gotten? And that's going to give us another definition of one revolution. When we find that number, the number of radians that we need to go all the way around the circle, that will be one revolution. Let's check this out. What is theta when s is equal to two pi r? We know that s is equal to theta times the number of radians, so we can solve this for theta theta equals s divided by r, and so let's try this out right here. Theta is s divided by r, and I'm gonna plug in this, this for s to pi r, and then I'm divided by r. I'm gonna say that theta is two pi. Well, well, theta is two pi if we've gone all the way around a circle, so one revolution is equal to two pi radians. Radians are a funky unit because sometimes you don't have to 
report them. You always have to report degrees, you always have to report meters, etc. But radians will sometimes go away and sometimes appear. We'll have to be very careful with radians. One revolution is 360 degrees and one revolution is 2 pi radians. So we can, of course, make the statement that 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. You about to tell me how big a radian is? I think you are. One radian, whoa, let's just call it one radian. One radian is about 57.3 degrees. So you can start to get a feel for that. I drew that on the previous page, but it was perhaps masked by some other stuff. We're looking for an angle that's a little bit bigger than 45. This right here, this angle, theta, theta equals one radian, because the path length of the tip of the arrow is s, and you can see here that s is equal to r, so theta is one radian. Get to know radians, because they're awesome. About how many radians fit in a circle? About six, right? Two pi radians fit in a circle, 360 degrees is one revolution. The only other things that I want to tell you as we introduce this chapter are omega, some people call it womega, is change in angular position divided by change in time. This is very similar to another change in position divided by change in time. You guys may perhaps remember V, which is defined to be, this is a definition, V is delta x over delta t, or more properly, dx dt, the derivative of position with respect to time. So let's be more honest here. This is d theta dt. Omega is the derivative of angular position with respect to time. And so if we draw something that is going to be rotating, if it's rotating, let's show its path right here. If it's rotating this direction, then is omega greater than zero or less than zero? What about this direction here? Can you fill those in? Can you fill those in? You've been watching. Well, yeah, but this is counterclockwise. So do you think it's positive omega or negative? Go. Negative. Nope, it's positive. And this is negative. Counterclockwise is defined to be the positive direction of rotation, and clockwise is defined to be the negative direction of rotation, just by convention. So we have to work with that, because it is what it is. Now, of course, you guys know that delta theta is equal to theta final minus theta initial. I don't need to go into that level of detail. But if things are going clockwise, then omega is positive. If they're going clockwise steadily, then omega is a positive number and it's a constant. If things are going clockwise steadily, then omega is a negative number and it's a constant. So there are all sorts of really cool things that we can write about that, but maybe most importantly, I could ask you, what is the angular speed? What is the angular speed if we go one rotation in some amount of time. Well, the angle, this is uh, angular speed for, uh, let's, maybe, maybe we could call this defining the period. We're gonna use a capital T to define period. And defining the period is done like this. We say that omega is the change in theta in some amount of time, and the time that it takes to go all the way around, we're going to call the period. But how many degrees, this is delta theta, how many degrees do we make if we make it all the way around the circle? Well, that's two pi radians, or 360 degrees. But we're going to use radians, of course. So this definition is very important, and we can solve it for period, finding that period is two pi divided by omega. So look at these units. This is two pi radians divided by omega. Omega has units. Omega's units are radians per second. And so the units of period, the units of period are radians divided by radians per second. And so if 